Okay, so packages of bees I picked up yesterday. We had a cold spell hit. Like the temperature yesterday and today have been below 50 degrees. So not a big deal. The bees will do okay. You can put your package of bees in the hives when it's that cold. But it was also late and almost dark when I got home. So I decided to delay it to today and hope the weather was wrong. Because you know the weather. They'll claim it's going to be 50 and it might be 60. Or they'll say it's going to be 80 and it might be 40. But anyways, so I normally make bee fondant. And keep it in the freezer and I went to go get some out because you really can't use um, bee syrup when the temperature is below 50 it it just won't work the bees really don't like it the the syrup gets too thick and you just run into problems however bee fondant you can use right away and they can take it up right away so it's very easy for them to get the food they need um, so since I've never done a video on this, I figured I'd go ahead and do it. Um, you're going to need a few things, and I'll show you my method. My method may or may not work for you. But you're going to need a candy thermometer. Now I have a digital thermometer here because I often double check my thermometer. So I'll use the candy thermometer, but I'll double check the temperature with this one. You're going to need some wax paper. You're going to need something that creates a form. And I'll be honest with you, I like to use plates. And I also like, you know, sometimes I'll do the full-size plate. Sometimes I'll do a small plate. What you have to realize about a full-size plate is edge to edge are 10 inches. you got to be careful with the size of the inside of your hives. So what I usually do is I just don't fill the plates all the way up. I go up just halfway. By going up just halfway, which this will make more sense as I do it, also makes it easier to break up. I can break it in halves, quarters, whatever if I need to. Now, the very important part is you need four parts of sugar to one part of water. It's very easy. Um, you're also going to need a couple containers. You want your containers to be dry. You want to pour your sugar in dry. And you're going to need a kitchen scale. So I can actually get this correct. Now... If you look up online, they're going to say two or a pound of sugar is two cups, but that's not exactly true. And they're going to tell you a half a pound of water is a half cup, and that's not exactly true. You want this recipe to be pretty exact. You're also going to need a quarter of a teaspoon of vinegar, and I often will substitute vinegar for my bee brooder formula, which I'll link to that video above. I've already got one on it. And uh, so vinegar or the bee brooder, or you can use them both. Um, so that's what I put in my fondant. Now, it's springtime, so using a bee brooder is okay. I wouldn't put this in my winter fondant. Does that make sense? Springtime, I use the bee brooder formula. Wintertime, I do not. And I actually mark that on the Ziploc bags when I store it in a freezer. So when you make this up, you can put this in. You know, if you don't use all of it, you can put it in Ziploc bags, stick it in your freezer, keep it there until you need it. Anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to measure out zero of the scale here. The scale is zeroed. It's on pounds. We're going to make sure we have as close to one pound of sugar as we can get. There we got one pound of sugar. And you can see, you would think that little bit wouldn't matter, but believe it or not, it will. All right. So now we're going to put that in a pan. Set this aside. We're going to turn off our scale because we got to re zero it to this one. Turn it on. What you need now is you need, since you put a pound of sugar in, and this is a four to one mixture, you need a quarter pound of water, which is four ounces. So that actually went over slightly. 
probably by a tablespoon. Let me fix this. I'll be right back. All right, I pulled a, poured a few drops out, and now we are correct. So this, the point I'm trying to make is the internet isn't always correct. You had too much sugar if you went by the two cups, and you had slightly too much water if you went by the half cup. So always weigh your measurements or always weigh your ingredients when it calls for a ratio four to one. So our water now goes in the pan too. Give me a minute to get everything moved out of the way so we can do the rest of this. All right, so the next thing we need, we need our quarter of a teaspoon of vinegar. I don't actually have a quarter of a teaspoon measuring spoon, but I do have an eighth, so two eighths is a quarter. So I'm gonna add my vinegar. Actually added a little too much. It's hard to pour an eighth, but I'll just put not quite full on this one. There we go. Next thing I'm going to add, by the way, I do not think that the type of vinegar you use actually matters. I'm using white wine vinegar. In the past, I've used apple cider vinegar. Now, because it's spring, I'm going to use my bee brooder formula. I'm going to put about the same amount of that in. So about a quarter of a teaspoon. And because I have a cat, I want to take and wash off this measuring spoon because it has wintergreen and peppermint in it. And cats, actually one of those, cats are allergic to. So hold on. It might actually be the tea tree oil. I can't remember which one it is, but cats do not do very good with one of those. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to turn your stove on a low heat. And by low, I mean don't crank it up to high. This has got to be done gradually. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the temperature at about, on my stove, about a level four. I'm going to get my candy thermometer ready, but I'm not going to use it quite yet. What I'm going to do while this is heating up is I'm going to stir this mixture. This will be very thick, by the way. Let me show you this. It's going to be very thick. But you want to try to get it equally. You can kind of feel it if there's still clumps in there. Like it'll drag. So now it's kind of like equally mixed. Probably should have turned this light on, which probably ain't going to offer any. Hold on just a minute. There you can see better. But you want to mix this up until all the clumps are gone and it's kind of evenly mixed, the same consistency. And now what you're going to do is you're going to wait until this starts to change colors. You could go ahead and put your uh, thermometer in there now. I'll do that. Note that I'm not really doing a huge amount. Like, I think that it's in there all the way. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's covered up. I've done this enough time, though. I know what it looks like when we get to a softball stage. So, what you want to do, you want to heat this up to 235 degrees. You want to do this very slowly. You also want to make sure it's consistent 235 degrees. So, you need to keep stirring the mixture, checking the temperature. So, I'll bring you back when we get to 235 degrees. I would actually record this process, but it's going to take many minutes to get to 235 degrees at a relatively low heat. You have to do it at a low heat because it's kind of critical, this temperature range. When you're making candy that's mostly sugar and just a little bit of water, and they're talking about softball, hardball, there's only a few degrees that separates those stages. So if you do it too fast, you're going to go over. You're going to totally waste the material. You're going to have to start over again. So make sure you're using a low heat, 
low to medium heat very gradually bring the temperature up and just out of curiosity let's go ahead and stick this in see what it says we are at it says we're at about a hundred and twenty degrees checking it again I'm making sure that I don't hold the probe on the bottom you'll notice if I hold the probe on the bottom it goes to about 150 degrees if I raise it up just slightly it immediately drops down to about 120 something so that's why you got to keep stirring this alright so as we're getting closer you can see the temperature there 218 19 23 24 25 My seven Now this will start to get foamy as we get closer to the temperature. Kind of see it's getting foamy. Just keep stirring it. At 234 the stove just kicked on 235 once we're at 235 I move it off of the burner now you can do a water test at this stage if you want. Basically the water test stage is you drop it into a glass of cold water. Let me get that ready. Try to set this up where you can see it. I'm basically going to take a drop of this now and put into this. have a drop on there might not be in my water might not be cold enough yeah actually I do see it so basically what it's doing in the bottom of the glass you're probably not gonna be able to see it you can actually see there's a ball of sugar in there it's a ball it didn't like dissipate so what we need to do is we're gonna let this cool down to hundred and ninety degrees and then we're going to pour it into the plates. You can kind of see what the liquid looks like now. It's clear. So uh, it's not foamy anymore. And hold on just a minute. 
What we need to do now, we need to let this cool down to about 190 degrees. Then we're going to take our wire whisk and we're going to whip it until it turns white and almost foamy. It'll look like miniature clouds. So again, once this cools down to about 190, this is what it looks like. You can tell the liquid is still mostly clear. Now we're going to take and whip it. But when we whip it, that's going to add air pockets to it. And this liquid is going to turn white, almost like clouds. It's going to get foamy, like meringue or something like that. And then once it's at that point, we can then pour it into the plates. So I'll kind of demonstrate this, how I do it. If you've got a hand mixer, just be careful pouring this hot liquid into a bowl. And it can splash around, which is why I like to use a wire whisk for this. Got the wire whisk. You can kind of see that it's starting to turn now white. I don't know if you can see it or not. Just keep going. You're going to feel superhuman by the time you're done with this. That's about right. I'm going to do it for another second or so. All right. So now I'm going to take a wooden spoon and actually scrape all this into my plates. You can pour the bulk of it off. Oh, this is hard to do. So there's my two plates. I'm going to pour about half in one, about the other half in the other. Now is where I wish I would have hold on my spoon which is here somewhere no idea oh here it is this will set up very quickly you could actually let this set up in the pan and then just kind of like break it out if you needed to or if you wanted to I generally just try to get it all as much out as I can. All right, that's good enough for now. And now it's just waiting till this cools to room temperature. Once this cools to room temperature, you can then take it and break it up into, into pieces. It'll cool down really quick, actually. You'll be surprised. I kind of wanted to even this out some because that's pretty thick. Thicker than I'd like for it to be. Just because I kind of did it in like two different stages. One cooled down before the other one. There we go. Good enough. Still got some in the pan. I'll have to scrape out once it solidifies. Still got some on my finger. I'm going to eat real quick. Mmm. Feeling like a honey bee already. Tea tree oil, wintergreen. I can taste that. 
as it starts to set up, it'll solidify. More for me to eat. I'm feeling the energy already. Mm. Anyways, so that's how you make beef fondant. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload content. And as always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your home.